Hello, my name is Benjamin Hart. I'm an American attorney and the managing director of Integrity Legal here in Bangkok, Thailand. As the title of this video suggests, we're discussing the I-751. That's a USCIS form. It's often referred to as a lift of conditions. We see this form frequently in the context of those who enter the United States in what's called conditional residence or a CR1 visa. So these are folks who are married less than two years at the time of the entry of the immigrant spouse to the United States. Those folks are issued, or that immigrant spouse is issued a two-year conditional resident visa. Only, only the bureaucracy could come up with something as weird sounding terminology-wise as conditional resident visa, but that's what it's called. And so in order to have your conditional permanent residence converted, if you will, into unfettered, unconditional lawful permanent residence, you need to file an I-751. We also see this in the context of folks that have gone to the United States in K-1 status. They have adjusted their K-1 visa status into immigrant status in the United States. So they've gotten their I-551, they've become a green card holder, but again, they are issued conditional resident status for two years, and then 90 days prior to the two-year anniversary, they need to file an I-751 to get their conditionality lifted. What happens if you're stuck abroad and you can't file your I-751. Well, that's a real problem. And it basically, for lack of a better term, and it is circumstantially dependent. There are, this is very much gonna depend on the specific circumstances, the specific facts of your case. So it's probably a good idea to contact a legal professional, gain some insight and guidance into how best to deal with that in your specific case. But in a lot of cases that we've dealt with, unfortunately, if you were abroad and couldn't get that filed, you've probably dropped out of status. You, you may not have status anymore, and now we've got to deal with somehow returning you to status. Now, there are remedies possibly available for that. Notably, it may be possible to deal with what's called an SB1 returning resident visa. It may be required that you go through the entire process again and immigrate back to the United States. It's going to be very case-specific and fact-dependent. That's why it's probably, again, I, I know people get kind of upset at me in the comments for saying this, but it's good advice. If you're stuck in this set of circumstances, probably a good idea to contact a legal professional, gain some insight and guidance into how best to proceed.